It's like a wave of the sea that driveth with the wind and toss. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable. Let's say that together. James 1 and 8 says, A double-minded man is how? Unstable. Unstable in how many? Or oh, we think that as long as I've got Jesus in my life and as long as I go to church, it's going to work itself out. I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters of the Lord, that unless you have a single mind towards the things of God, you're not going to make it. Unless you've got a single mind towards your own prosperity, health, you're not going to make it. Because the Bible simply says, if you waver in your thoughts, you like the waves being tossed to and fro by the waves. And let that man know that he can receive nothing of the Lord. Why? Because his thoughts are not together. The Bible says in James chapter 4 verses 1 through 5 For whence comes wars and fighting among you? Come they not hence even of your lust that war in your members? Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss. That ye may consume it upon your lust. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whoso therefore, whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do ye think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit dwelleth in us, lusteth to envy? But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resists the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye what? Ye double-minded. I've got to keep it together. Y'all got to help me with this. I have to keep it together. As I was just sitting and thinking about the circumstances and the situations of the church and many church folks, it came to me one of the reasons why we're unable to sustain and are unable to sustain the things that we desire the Lord it's because our minds are double it's because we've got one thought towards God and another thought toward our sins that's why James as he wrote he says that the spirit in us desires to lust or it envies it means that the nature of man is not to do what God desires but he desires to do his own thing and that's why I got to die to myself so that I may take up my cross and because I've got to love what he loves and I've got to hate what he hates I've got to keep it together the Bible says that draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you we think it's all dependent upon God we say that God's going to do it for me no you've got to do something towards him mm -hmm. And that is, you have to develop a love for God and His kingdom that He might see your seriousness or your urgency for the completion of His promise. The Bible says, draw nigh to God and He will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning.
and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Speak not evil one to another. Brethren, he that speaketh evil of his brother and judges his brother speaketh evil of the law and judges the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. Ephesians 2 verses 10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Simply says that it was God's plan that he would put his laws and his word in our hearts, that we would manifest the kingdom through how we live. The Bible says we walk circumspectly before the Lord, which means that I walk carefully before God as I understand the will of God for my life and for the kingdom. Wherefore, remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. That at the time ye were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus Ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law commandments contained in the ordinances for to make in himself of twain one new man so making peace. And, he, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. And came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and them that were nigh. And through him we both ex access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. And ye are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. I have to keep it together. I got to take y'all back to the beginning. If you go back to Genesis in your mind that when God's desire was to create man and to be in fellowship with him, the first thing that Satan did was he found a way to create a separation between God and man. And that lets me see that when Satan looked at man, he saw the thing that came out of him was a woman and he knew that if he could design, divide the woman from in the kingdom of God. And that's why we've got to be careful and we've got to keep it together because when I understand the purpose of God, when God says no, I've got to say no. When God says yes, I've got to say yes. Because when God said to Adam, you can have of everything around you, but of this tree, you're not to touch, you're not to have. Adam should have conveyed it to Eve. And when he should have been. Y'all understand what I'm trying to say. I, I've got to keep it together. It means that if God tells me to protect this thing, I've got to stand on God. If he tells me to build this thing, I've got to build this thing. Why? Because I've got to keep it together. Because God is depending on me. He's depending on the oneness. That's why the Bible says there's one Lord, one faith, one Yes. And when we look at the church today, we've got all these different opinions, all these different ideologies about how we could and should do things. But when we go back to the one book, when we see the one message from God, he said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. And that's why Joshua said, If it seems evil to you, 
whom you will serve, serve the Lord. He says, for as for me and my heart, we shall serve the Lord. Why? Because I know he's one Lord. I know that he's one faith. I know there's one baptism. And Satan is trying to come in and cause there to be divisions. Oh, but I promise you, as long as we stand God, as long as I keep it together, the Bible says he has to first bind the strong man in order to spoil his goods. And when I keep it together, sickness can't come into my body. When I keep it together, death can't come. Why? Because if I'm hidden in him and he in me, if I abide in him and he in me, the Bible says I can ask for whatever I will and it shall be done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. I have to keep it together. Hallelujah! Yes, Lord. That's why the enemy's fighting your minds. Yes, he That's why he's challenging your thoughts. Because he wants you to believe your doubts and doubt your beliefs. That's why when, when God's dealing with a man or a woman and trying to bring them to salvation, that's why the devil tries to bring fear into their hearts and their minds as the anointing of God comes upon them. It's so that they can take their minds off of where God is and think about who they are and what's going on with them. Oh, but honey, if you understand, if you keep it together and you understand that when God moves on you and your spirit is upon you, the Bible says when the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. That means that if he's there, he's about to give him my deliverance. That means if he's there, I'm about to get my breakthrough. I have to keep it together. We are his workmanship. It baffles me how when I look around at the people of God, it seems as though we don't even get it. We think we have a right to choose what we want to do as it relates to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And then we try to figure out when we go our own way why things don't go the way we intended. If you knew what God's will was and you kept it together, you would see the manifestation of God. Okay. Think about what I'm telling you. As long as Adam stayed in the place where God told him to, everything he needed was provided for him. As long as Adam obeyed what God said, everything he needed was provided for him. So much so that God would come in the cool of the evening and talk to him. Yeah. See, I, 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 when I was in the shower this morning, I was having a discussion. It was more like a debate with a conversation in my head. And I was talking to some people as it relates to God, to myself. Amongst myself. Y'all don't understand what I'm saying, but in other words, I have discussions with my people in my mind eh, to confirm what I'm thinking as it relates to the Word of God. Uh, oftentimes we say that God doesn't change, eh, that God stays the same all the time. And, and I used to say that and, and, and just put that where it was, but then it was confirmed to me this morning that God does change. Uh, Y'all gonna get quiet, I'm about to show you. If you think about it, when God met man in the garden, he would come to him in the cool of the evening. Because man sinned, God couldn't come to him like he desired. So then the Bible showed me that he would then, he told men to pitch a tent. And then as they made a tent and built an altar and had to put smoke in the holies of holies, he would come and visit the priest in the temple. Uh, but the temple was something portable that they moved to place. And then when it came to Solomon, God told him to build me a house. And God would dwell in the house. That's where he met his people. Uh, but he said to the New Testament church, that do you not know that you are the temples of the living God? In other words, God don't dwell in temples made by hands. Now he dwells in us. He wants the temple to go out to the streets. He understand what I'm trying to say. When you understand that we still come in the church, we still sitting around and waiting for God in the church, but God made you the church. He wants you to go. 
together. together. Why? Because if I keep doing things that don't work, it's going to fall apart. Yes, it will. And we're trying to figure out why. We're doing all these things, but nothing's happening. You know, I, I think about stuff like that all the time. See, for me, I have to evaluate things over and over again. I don't take anything at face value. Because I've learned over the years that when you get complacent with the way that something is, you don't seek for something different or something better. Okay. And I find that God has dealt with men differently throughout scriptures. And he's coming to a place now where he's manifesting himself differently. So much so that when he desired to redeem man, he came in the flesh, in the likeness of sinful flesh, that he might redeem men to himself. He'd never done that before. So when we say he's the same ever, you got it wrong. Because he saw that men needed a savior. He tried through ordinances. He tried he tried through different ceremonial portions, but none of them could remove the conscience of sin. But he one time took on the human likeness and said, prepare me a body, and I'm gone. And then he said uh, that when he built the church, he was building upon the understanding that he was the Christ, the Savior of the world. In other words, if I got the anointing, the that he's God, that Jesus Christ has broken down the middle wall of petition. I can keep it together now because I understand that God has already made the way for me to live victorious. God has already made the way for me to have victory. He's already made the way for me to have healing. He's already made the way for me to have deliverance. I have to keep it together. I have to keep it together. God, and I hope you get what I'm saying. God wants a people who first knows who they are. I find that you can't put any confidence in people or a person who has insecurity issues. Because they're one way in one place and there's something else in another place. But when you've got it together, you're going to be Joe when you by yourself. Hmm. Or when you at the White House or at you at the outhouse, you're going to still be Joe. Huh? And when you understand whose you are, you don't change with the times and change with the people, but you stay the way that God called you to be. Amen. And what I'm finding is we got church folks who they waver as people go in one direction. And then they try to come back and stand strong and look like they're prosperous in God. The devil is a liar. Because when you got it together, when the church is going that direction and it's wrong, you stay the foundation of the word. Yes. Uh, but let me show you on the other part of that. So many of us now, the church has come to the place where they're standing in a place where the foundation is dead and dying, but they won't move because God said, go forth. Uh huh. <laughs> Y'all don't hear me. God said, go forth. But we still sinning. God said, move ahead. But we still waiting for him to come do it. We say God's a healer. How is God going to heal him except we take healing out? We say he's a deliverance. How is somebody going to be delivered except we go and bring them out of? Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, that's it. When God needed deliverance for his people, he didn't just go and let the gates open in Egypt, he said, I'm going to prepare a man called Moses. He said, Moses, go to Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. 
We sit around and go, it's a shame what's going on in the world. No, it's a shame you sitting where you are and saying what you say because you don't understand. You have the answer to the problems of the world. Amen. Oh, y'all say, well, preacher, I'm no politician. I thought about that this morning. And I'm almost finished, but they got all these advertisements all over TV telling you to vote on November 2nd. And people are contemplating whether they're going to vote Republican, Democrat, or Tea Party. Sad thing about it, most of us, we vote one way because that's our way our mother voted or our grandmothers voted or somebody else. We don't even listen to the issues. And I'm not preaching politics, but I'm just telling you, it's the same in the church. We don't even hear what God's saying. We just do what everybody else is doing and what everybody else did. And, and I hear God telling the church, uh, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves uh, and pray uh, and seek my face uh, and turn from their wicked ways, uh, he said, I will bear hand from heaven. Uh, I will forgive their sins. Uh, and I will, I will do what I will forgive their sins. Uh, uh, no, we got to stay right there for a second. Uh, we say the church don't have sins. Uh, the church has sins that need to be dealt with. Uh, because the church's sin has to be healed first. Hallelujah. Y'all don't want to talk to me. I have to keep it together. We want to rush to heal, heal the land. But he first has to forgive the sins of the church. And when the church gets it together. Oh, yeah. uh, Y'all don't want to say nothing. I knew there was a fight in this message. But the devil is a liar. I bind every evil spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. I have to keep it together. And that means that when I recognize that the church is not the four walls, but the church is in me, the church is in us, I got to get rid of backbiting, I got to get rid of hate, I got to get rid of envy, I got to get it together, and once I get it together, I have to keep it together, if my children are going to be blessed, I got to have it together, if my We just tell them and they'll follow. Let me tell you something. People are too intelligent these days to believe your mess. <laughs> you think they'll be impressed with your shaking and your bucking? You got another thing coming. Huh? They don't want to even hear you because except you can give explanation with your presentation, you're not speaking anything. That's it. You say, well, I, you know, I know the truth. Well, a lot of people know the truth. Doesn't mean they do it. <laughs> the truth that I know compels me not to sit on it. The truth that I know compels me to go forth and to tell others what God says. So much so the other day I told my wife, I got to get back into the jail because I'm sitting here busy every day with, with work and everything else. But the fellas at the jail need me. I got to get back there and bring truth to them. Somebody said to me, well, when are you going to have time? It, it's not a matter of when am I going to have time. It's a matter of how am I going to make time. Y'all don't understand what I'm trying to tell you. Because if I can get everybody to recognize that you got to get it together, I don't have to do all the things that I do. And that means I can go and do what God called me to do. Yeah, y'all don't understand. Yeah, I got that. See, I understand the principle now. Because, see, I, I was thinking about something, and, and, and thank you, uh, uh, Nicholas and, 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 uh, and Renee and, and, and uh, Derek. They showed me, taught me something yesterday. Derek is the oldest of the three. Sister Kimberly didn't have to be present for him to take care of his two siblings. In other words, when you train somebody the way that they're supposed to be, you don't have to be standing over them giving them instructions. Amen. Because you know that you've instilled in them everything they need to help the other siblings and the young one coming along. But the problem is, we got folks standing and wanting to be in position and be in authority. They don't have it together, but they want you to act like you got it together. No, no. Uh, uh, I got to get it together. Uh, 
How many spirits are there? One. One governor. Hold on. He say one governor. Whose spirit is it? It ain't God's spirit. Because we all got our own spirit. We're going to tell God what we will do and not do. Isn't that what, how it goes? Isn't that how it goes? We tell God, God said stop. We said, well, God, you don't really mean that, so I'll keep going. Amen, somebody? We say we children of God, but God tells us, uh-uh, don't go there no more. Well, we go, well, God, it ain't hurt nobody. Y'all won't say amen, but it's the truth. No, yeah. it is, it is the Watch truth. this. There is one body, one spirit, even as you are what? Called. And what? One hope. Called in what? One hope. Hold on. People say, well, see, you don't understand my relationship with God. My relationship with God is different from yours. Hold on. He said there's one call in the hope of your calling. In other words, he calls us all together with the same purpose. Can anybody say amen? amen. One Lord. One who? One what? Yeah, y'all went ahead of me. One what? One Lord. In other words, one who is in control. One what? One what? So then why are you in control when God should be in control? Who should be in control of your body? Who should be in control of your tongue? Who should be in control of your decisions? Who should be in control of your money? Boy, y'all got to slow on that one. See, God wants you to understand that if he's in control, You'll keep it together. Watch this. Watch this. One Lord, one what? And one what? Oh, hold on. And we don't have to do all that. Because there are many ways that we can come under salvation, right? Isn't that what they're telling us nowadays? Go to the next verse. Verse 6 says, one Father, one God, one who? God. And Father. of who? Of all. Hold on. If you've been birthed into the kingdom, then who's your Father? God is your Father. God is your Father. So, a daddy don't give one set of rules to these children, and then another set of rules to that child. Look at this. One God, one Father, of who? Who is where? And who is what? Uh-uh. What does it say? It's just who what? It's what? Y'all ain't there yet. Y'all gotta get there. One God and Father for all, of all, of all. Who is what? And in order for him to be through, that means he has to be taking you somewhere. Exactly. And if you're not going where he's trying to take you, guess what? He ain't through you. Watch this. And where? So if you got the Holy Ghost, then you should have the oneness. You should have it together. So I guess what's being said is, I got a ghost, but not the Holy. <laughs> I get that. That's what it is. Because if he's one, God can't divide himself. No, he can't. He's got to be one. How often? All the time. All the time. So why do you say that he's different when you act the way that you act? Why do you say he gives you the right to be what you are when you want to be that? Then that means you outside of his will. What do we need to do? I have to what? Keep, Keep it together. together. Watch this. Wherefore he said when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave what? Yes. Gives unto who? Yes. So you say... I can't do this. I can't do that. Hold on. If you got the Holy Ghost, then you should have received the gifts that you needed to fulfill the kingdom. Yes or no? So why are we talking about we can't do? Why can't we do? We need to take the W or take the C off of can't and we need to make it W-O. 
I won't do. Because what it is, is the unwillingness to do. Because if you are willing to do what God needs to be done, the Holy Ghost will not only teach you, but he will empower you to get it done. Y'all okay. won't help. Y'all won't help me. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. He says, he says, when he descended, it's the same also that ascended up for all, for above all heavens, that he might fulfill what? That he might fill what? So y'all talking about, y'all still waiting on God to manifest something. It's already finished. He's waiting on you to get it together so that you might receive what he has. Look at the next verse. And he gave some what? And some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and, and what? Now, those are, that's a fivefold ministry. God put those coverings over the church as men, as strongholds, or strong men, so that the enemy would not come in and spoil the goods. Now, if you don't submit yourself to your head, your spiritual head, guess what? You don't have it together. Because you've got a type of MLS. Meaning that you're doing what you want to do when the head says go this direction. Everybody mm -hmm. say this with me. I have to, I have to. keep it Keep it together. together. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. For the what? What are they? What is the fivefold ministry given for? Say, say that loud for me, kids. For the what? For the perfecting of the who? For the perfecting of the sinners. For the perfecting of the ungodly. So the preacher supposed to be out there preaching. Getting sinners saved, right? No. The preacher is supposed to be perfecting the saints. If you have the fivefold ministry, the Bible says you're given to the perfecting of who? But the saints. So who's supposed to be winning the sinners? The church. Who's the church? We are. The saints. Am I making sense anymore? Yes. Y'all trying to figure out why the church ain't growing? Because you ain't doing nothing. You trying to figure out why people are getting healed? Because you're not doing anything. You waiting on the preacher to do it. If he's called to the fivefold ministry, guess what he's doing? He's perfecting you so you can do what? Go out. I have to. I have to keep it. Keep yeah. it. You know what I need y'all to do? Hold up your right hand. I have to, I have to keep, it keep it together. together. Now what is the right hand? Right hand is an oath, right? Yes. So you make it an oath. I have to. Why you put your hand down, brother? I have to. I have to keep it. Keep it together. together. Watch this. Now we're gonna be finished in just a second. Watch this. Watch this. He says, for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the what? For the what? The body of Christ. Till we all until we all do what? Hold on. That means we traveling to do what? To get there. And when we arrive, we're gonna all be what? One. That means we're gonna all look the same. That means we're gonna all act the same. Y'all got quiet on me. Because mm -hmm. who's the head? God's the head. And if he's the head, we're going to have to look like he looked. If he's the head, we're going to have to act like who acts. He acts. If he's the head, we're going to have to speak like he Oh, Y'all going to have to go here with me. Y'all understand where I'm trying to take you? Watch this, watch this, watch this. He says, that we henceforth be no more what? Stop right there. You've been saved for longer than a, longer than a year and you're still crying about everything that happens to you? You're still a child. If I'm 12 years old and I'm still crying about spilled milk, something's wrong. Yes? Look at what the Bible says, y'all. He says, that we henceforth be no more what? 
children. That means nobody has to hold your hands to take you across the street. That we be no more what? Children do what? Stop right there. That we be no more what? Children. And if we have a, an infant or a childlike mentality, then that's when we have problems that knocks her from side to side. Why? Because we don't have it together. And why don't we have it together? Because we got double minds. Y'all got that? Yes. Well, let's just look at this. Let's go back to it. We'll read it all, all the way through this time. He says, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with what? Every way without By the? And the cunning crappiness whereby they lie in what? So in other words, you ain't going to let anything shake your faith. Why? Because you're not a child. A child, you can tell them, come on, come on in, and let me give you some candy. And they may follow you. But a dog go, I don't know you. But some adults with a childlike mind, you offer them some candy, they're going to follow. Why? Because they're still children. So when we come to the church, we got to understand that when we get it together, we can stand and say, listen here, Satan. You've been sitting in this place long enough. Because I've got it together, you got to leave here. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Watch this, watch this. But he says simply this. But speaking the truth in what? Yeah. Speaking the what? Yeah. Go back to speaking what? The truth. Speaking the what? The truth. truth. Y'all say, well, if they ask me, I can't really say that. I don't want to hurt their feelings. I tell you all the time, don't ask me something if you don't want me to tell you the truth. Because I'm going to tell you. Because I got to speak the truth in what? In love. He said, speak the truth in love. Speaking the truth in love may grow up how? Into who? Him being who? God in what? So if you weak in some areas of your life, it's because people aren't speaking the necessary truth to you to keep your mind single. If you come to me and tell me something negative about how you feel, first thing I'm going to remind you of what God said in his word. And then let you decide. You know why? Because if you choose to believe what you feel and what the devil say over what God says, I can't help you. Y'all understand that? But look at this. But speaking the truth and love may grow up into him all things which is the what? Amen. Even Christ. For whom the whole body is what? The word fitly means that there's no lack. There's no, there's nothing missing. It is perfectly what? A joint. Watch this. To fitly join together, compacted by that which Eve every joint supplier. Oh, hold on. I don't have nothing to offer the kingdom. The Bible just says every joint doth what? Supply. Some, every person who says they're in the church should have something to what? To offer. Amen. According to the word. Amen. Watch this. Oh, I know some, somebody just said, well, why does the church make me feel like I, don't, I can't do anything? That's because you don't know who you are. You may not allow me to do something, but it doesn't mean I'm not going to do what I call to do. Does that make sense? Yeah. Let, let me say it to you this way. You had a door open, and when I got to the door, you shut it. Does that mean I can't come out the room? If I got to go through the window, Jesus, the friends of the man who, who needed to be healed, there was no room in the house. So they tore the roof. When I got it together, you can't stop me from being what I've got to be. When I've got it together, you can't delay the process that God has called me to. I don't think y'all understand what I'm saying. You say, well, people are always putting summer blocks in my way. That's because you don't know who you are. When you got it together, sister, when you got it together, brother, 
When somebody try to block you, you say, listen here. I'm going to give you fair warning. Either you move out of my way, or I'm going to take you with me as I go. Y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. Y'all never had that experience? Yeah. Somebody tried to stop you from going to where you're going and you know you had to get there? Yeah. You about knocked them over, didn't you? Why? Because you ain't going to stop me. See, when you get it together, when the devil puts stumbling blocks in your way, you say, listen here, thank you, Satan, for putting that in. I needed to step up. Hallelujah. Y'all sitting there complaining that there's a stumbling block. No, that's a step for me. Because I'm going to go up one higher. Y'all yes. understand what I'm saying? Yes. Watch this. And I'm almost finished, I promise you. Look what he says. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies according to the effectual working in the measure of every what? Every part. Maketh increase of the? the body. Unto what? So in other words, the body increases itself. Who does it? The body. Not the head. Who increases? The body. So we wait on God to increase the church. Isn't that wrong? Who's supposed to be increasing the church? The body. The body. How many people you witnessed to this week? How many people did you tell about Jesus this week? Oh, I'm waiting on God to prick their hearts and then I'll talk to them. God ain't going to prick their hearts until you bring clarity to what the God's dealing with them on. Watch this. Watch this. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other, what? Gentiles. Gentiles simply mean unbelievers. In the vanity of their what? Mind. Your mind is a dangerous place. I have an amusement park called Carlton's Provisions. And it's in my head. If I go to traveling in my head, I can get lost there. You can be talking to me, and I don't even hear you. I can be hurting and don't feel the pain. Why? Because I can get lost in my own mind. Your mind is a dangerous place to be. Somebody can say amen right there. Because if you stop believing a certain, things, a certain thing about a certain person, even when you have seen that that's not who they are and what it's about, your mind still tells you that's who it is. You have to say amen to me. I have to get it, keep it together. Because my mind playing tricks on me. And the devil working through your mind to try to stop you. How many of y'all remember when you used to be a little kid and you used to see all kinds of stuff in the dark? And when you turn the lights on, it disappeared. That's because it was never there. Your mind told you it was there. That's what we need to do in our lives. We need to put the light on. What is the light? The light is the truth of God's word. The light is the truth of God's word. Because when the devil tries to bring me to believe things that are not true, i got to remind myself what God says. Watch this. I know y'all want me to finish. I want to finish too. I wanted to sit down 20 minutes ago. Watch this. He says, This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their what? Mind. Having the understanding, done what? Meaning, having their knowledge or their revelation taken away from them. You used to believe God. You used to be able to see the way of God or the provision that God had for you. But now because you have grown carnal in your thinking, you wavering, you don't even know how to see the path that God has created for you. Watch this. Watch this. He said, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from who? The life of who? I'm living. Yeah, you're living, but you're not living in peace. Having the life of who? Through who? That is in them. In other words, 
your refusal to believe or take the knowledge of God is stealing from you what God has purpose for your life. Look at this. Watch this. He says, Because the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling, have given themselves over to what? And the word lasciviousness means uncontrolled emotions. Your emotions are hypersensitive. Everything hurts you. You feel everything. Everybody's against you. The world is on fire. And that's your focus. But when you understand you hidden in Christ and Him and you, the world can be on fire. But you can't burn. The country can go bankrupt. But God will have a man in some place feeding His people. And y'all don't believe me, huh? Y'all said that, well, you ain't never had to deal with not having anything. Huh? You think. Let me tell you. But I've learned to trust in God. Watch this. Watch this. Who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness to work all on what? With what? With greediness. Greed is now your food. But ye have not so what? Oh, you learn the church. You learn the ways of religion. But you have not learned the ways of Christ. In other words, you don't understand the body. The Bible says, many are sick and weakly amongst you, not deserting the Lord's body. You don't understand the body. When I understand the body, that means I have to do what? Keep it together. How many of y'all want to keep it together with me? I promise you, the economy won't get much better. But how many of y'all know that the people of God can prosper? Yes. People's health are going to be failing them. But how many of y'all know the people of God can be getting healthier? Mm -hmm. Y'all see y'all over go there. I still love my fat back. I still. <laughs> if we turn back to the ways of God, health won't be an issue for us. Y'all understand that? People say, I can't even afford health care. You won't have to have health care. Because there'll be a bomb in Gilead. See, y'all don't think I'm crazy. Almost in every old person's house, growing up, there was a pot of oil sitting next to the bed. I could never understand that thing. Until I was a young minister and the, and the old mother called me to her house and asked me to pray for her. And she said, grab that oil right there off my, neck, my nightstand. And I'm sitting there going, why you got oil on your nightstand? In other words, when she got sick, she didn't grab for BC powder. She didn't grab for Tylenol or ibuprofen. She grabbed for that which God had given his people for healing and deliverance. You don't know y'all don't go there with that. When you get it together, you don't have to run to the doctor. You just go to Jesus. They said this way. That they wanted to say, Jesus give me all my medicine where? In the prayer room. In other words, when I get it together, I let go of the world's principles and I connect to God's way. Because God's way is the way to our salvation. God's way is the way to our healing. God's way is the way to our prosperity. told me to tell somebody, that's why every time he lines you with his purpose, Satan sends you an imp to pull you out of the way. Because those imps are there to get you out of the will. Because you want peace for your life. You can't have peace until you one with God. Y'all understand that? There's some people who think they can have peace when they become one with somebody. And this is free, and I'm finished. There's some people who think that when I get married, 
My life is going to be perfect. Let me tell you. The Bible says the two should no longer be twain become, but would come one flesh. If you want your peace removed, get married. And I'm not saying marriage is a bad thing. But you spend all day, every day, trying to figure out how to please somebody else. That's why Paul said, I'd rather you be as I am. He said, but if you can't keep yourself together and you burn it, he said, then I tell you, marry. But just know that after you marry, you seek in the things of the world to please your mate. He said, but if you single, all you got to do is please who? Oh, y'all get it, huh? I got to keep it together. I won't preach to the young women or young men at this church. You got to 